Welcome to Screen Chat, live from the Media Hub on RiotRadio.ca. I'm your host, Justin, and with me today behind the scenes, we have Evan. Screen Chat is your show talking all about the latest Marvel movies, DC Comics, Star Wars adaptations, and much, much more. Today, we have an action-packed episode, as always, as we have a lot to talk about. As recently, we saw Disney's D23. It was their 2024 edition. And there was just so much to talk about. This was from Anaheim in California. It was a three-day event, and there's some nice Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, and I guess National Geographic things to dive into. Uh, we've kind of created a list of our most anticipated things as well. So we might miss a couple things that were discussed, but overall, we've got kind of the big ones out of the way. So that being said, Evan, uh, are you excited for today's episode? Very much so. I'm mm -hmm. a big Disney nerd. Uh, I've been growing up with Disney for years, and I'm really excited for some of the things that they're coming out with. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's going to be super awesome, and yeah, I'm ready to get into it. Yeah, for sure. So they do have a lot of stuff coming out. We're going to start off with more of their animated project they've, projects sorry, that they've announced. Starting off with uh, Moana 2, which uh, we saw another look at, uh, officially announcing that Moana does have a younger sister. So we did get kind of a teaser trailer a couple of months ago now, but now we have a full-on trailer introducing some new characters. And uh, just a reminder that the release date will be November 27th, 2024. So that is later on in the year. But once again, this movie looks like it's going to be amazing. I know that's what a lot of people thought initially, but now that we have a full look at the trailer, see kind of uh, the vibe that we're getting. I'm really excited for this movie. Evan, what are your thoughts? Absolutely. Um, I... Hot take. All right. So I've had people say Moana is the best Disney movie ever. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, <laughs> but I think Moana one was very good. Mm -hmm. I think this one might be better than the first yeah. one. Um, I like the fact that she has a younger sister. I don't think we've ever had a Disney movie where we've had this much of an age gap between two siblings. Mm -hmm. I think maybe the closest is like, Peter Pan, I think the age difference between Wendy and her youngest brother is roughly the same, but uh, this will be good. We also get another sisterly movie, so that's really exciting too, regardless of how much her sister actually plays a role in the movie. Um, I think just having that and higher stakes makes the movie a little more, or, or you shouldn't say higher stakes, more personal stakes, mm -hmm. uh, makes the movie much better and relatable. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I think that this movie will be another box office hit from Disney kind of to end off the year as it does come out in late November. Um, I'm really excited for what this universe has to offer just because we are getting a live action Moana as well coming out at some time with The Rock. And now we got Moana 2, which a lot of people thought was going to get canceled. But um, I'm glad that it didn't get canceled and they're still doing the live action and the sequel. Um, in terms of like expectations, I do expect it to be a, a box office hit, like I mentioned. In terms of it being better than the first one, now... Um, to your point, there was, there's probably going to be a different vibe, different, more personal vibe to it. And I think a lot of people will kind of enjoy it a bit more, especially the ones that kind of grew up with Moana. Now, unfortunately, it's not my childhood movie, but I feel like any kid that was like younger when it came out and now are older and still in like that teenage years can now probably enjoy this one a bit more, especially with the hype of it being like such a childhood movie. So I'm sure it'll do a lot of big things. But now this is a good segue to um, another movie that was very much a part of my childhood back in the day and it's now getting a part three as it was announced that there will be an Incredibles 3, which is officially on the way. Um, yeah, honestly, this is probably my favorite Disney announcement of the whole D23. Um, Incredibles 1 is probably my favorite Disney movie of all time. Uh, I said on Friday that I could probably recite most of this movie and we forgot to test it out. We might have to today, honestly, off air. But yeah, Incredibles 1 is one of my favorite films ever. Uh, the second one, I don't even think was that bad. Just probably was not better than the first one though. So with that being said, them getting a part three was a bit unexpected and I'm very excited for this. I feel like this one is kind of going to be the, the home run, if you will. I think they're going to redeem themselves from the second one. Not saying the second one was bad, but definitely the first one was a lot better. Better. and i think this is kind of going to be their good send-off that we need so evan coming back to you what are your initial thoughts on this uh fantastic um i would give incredibles 2 a much harsher grade than most people would mm -hmm. but um i don't think it was the worst thing disney's ever done disney pixar um but the incredible family is going to be back and that's super exciting i we don't really know anything about this other than the title we yep. don't even know what the plot is we don't know who the villains are who knows there may be a giant age gap here there could be which yeah. i would be hyped for if there was a sudden jump in time mm -hmm. you know maybe jack jack is in like 
elementary school or preschool or something. Um, you know, Dash could be in high school. Violet could be having her first part-time job. Like, that would be yeah. a really cool way to progress the story forward. Um, yeah. Or, hey, maybe they start their own superhero agency now. Yeah, that, that would that'd be, be kind of cool, cool too. too. Yeah, we have no, like Evan just said, we have no real information besides the title. No release date either as well. Uh, some further products that we'll talk about, they do have release dates, but unfortunately this one does not. But yeah, honestly for me, like growing up, the first Incredibles movie was probably my favorite. Also, my favorite color was red. It probably came because of the Incredibles, to be honest. You know, that was like my whole personality. That's why I love like The Flash and Daredevil and Spider-Man. And Mr. Incredible falls into that category for sure. Um, in terms of what I want to see, it's kind of hard to say because I feel like the second movie, I'm not saying was so left field to what the first one was, but like I kind of got Cars 2 vibes and I know that's kind of like, not, not necessarily like a crazy take, but I kind of wanted to see like a superhero versus supervillain movie, not necessarily bitter, like, you, you know, if you watch the movie, you understand that like the plot was more or less like trying to destroy the supers within versus like superhero versus supervillain and i think that i'm not saying it didn't work but definitely not what i was expecting i was like who's going to be the new syndrome are we going to get the underminer are we going to get this and it threw me for a loop which i wasn't mad at not necessarily um the happiest but i still really enjoyed the movie like i thought it was good but maybe with this one we have like a new big bad or like we have a returning villain that they've teased or something like that maybe you see the rise of like chronos again who knows maybe i'm just grasping at straws but i think there is going to be something there for sure i'd be i think it'd be hilarious if we had the underminer part three <laughs> where <laughs> no, like I... somewhere in the movie he just shows up because he was at the end of the first one the beginning of the second yeah and i think that would be really funny i thought like the underminer like i guess he's at the end of incredibles one like as people say today like that was my roman empire was yo what happened after that and then we at least we know we know now but for the longest time i always imagined yo what would happen if they fought the underminer bro but with that being said I'm very excited for that movie i feel like once we get more information it'll be pretty cool to i guess get an opinion on because like i said we don't know fingers crossed this doesn't get canceled as well i don't think it will disney are pretty good at that in comparison to star wars and marvel like the disney pixar aspect i feel like if they're gonna announce it at a d23 it's gonna happen so i'm pretty confident saying that the disney pixar side of things from d23 they will be happening for sure i uh, can't necessarily promise the same things about the rest of the stuff but disney pixar is very solid with that so um we're gonna go to the next one now which i, I kind of my tone kind of changed because now i see what the next one is and i was just saying how solid disney picks are but i don't really think they're solid for this one which we'll get into but we did get an official official announcement of toy story 5 set to come out june 19th 2026 now uh, <laughs> yeah you and i both just had a sigh i thought toy story 3 was like hot take i'll probably die in the hill that it is the best one but not anymore. <laughs> because no, that's not even a hot take. I think that is objectively correct. <laughs> to me, it was the best one because it had the best story, the best plot, the best hardships, the best character developments, and quite frankly, the best ending. Like, you kind of got it all in one. And then when Toy Story 4 came out, I was kind of like, damn, do we need this movie? And to my shock, I, as much as we didn't need it, I actually enjoyed it. Like, I thought it was a lot better than I thought it was. The ending of it, I thought was even better than the end of Toy Story 3. I'm like, damn, they, they actually proved me wrong and they got the ending right. I was crying when Buzz and Woody do that whole, like, to infinity and beyond thing like that. I kind of hit, yo, I can't lie. Like, I legit cried tears and I was, I think, an adult. Like, I was at least 17 when I watched that film. So, going back to the world of Toy Story especially after we got the Lightyear spinoff, and I also thought that was really good. Um, I don't know, because clearly from this photo, official photo, by the way, that's not a concept photo. Uh, we see Buzz and, and Woody are back together. The whole gang is back together. And now the toys, like the idea of the story I kind of like, like the toys are going to have to battle between toys and AI, or technology is what I should say. As we see, it looks like that's Bonnie. I'm assuming it is underneath her blanket there with an iPad. Yeah. A Mickey that, Mouse it, iPad, it if you look Bonnie, closer. <laughs> uh, in this. Oh, wow. I didn't even notice that there's a silhouette of the uh, the Mickey Mouse ears. But yeah, this is 100% Bonnie. Mm -hmm. Now, 
what kind of annoys me and i said this off air and i'll make this pitch again is that this idea of the of like this plot i actually love it i always like thought back in the day what if they were ever in a i guess predicament of technology versus toys when i was growing up like i'm a 2002 so i kind of had the blessing of being in like the technology and the toys era like i remember playing with wrestling action figures when i was like a little kid and then in like my latter stages of life is when i got like my first ipod touch my iphones all that good jazz so this story I actually really like, but why do it with the original cast? I would like, this could have been so much cooler if it was like a Toy Story story. I don't know, that, that wouldn't work, that wouldn't work. I was thinking Star Wars, but if they made us like a Rogue One type of movie in the Toy Story franchise, I'd be okay with that. Give us new toys to like, new heroes, new characters, maybe a villain, maybe like just do something, right? I don't necessarily know if this story needs to be told through the eyes of Buzz and Woody and the rest of the characters. I don't know if I'm in the minority on that, but I do think that if you got a Toy Story spinoff with the same plot with different toys, I think it'd be a lot better. So that's kind of my two cents. Evan, I don't know your thoughts on that specifically, but yeah, I just, I don't know if I need this movie really and truly. If that's the case, then I think we're both in the minority because I, I agree. Yeah. I think that like, Toy Story 5, even Toy Story 4. We don't need Toy Story 4, mm -hmm. but it was good and it was enjoyable. It could have been done with other characters. I don't think we needed to have like a Bo Peep story arc. <laughs> um, but now the fact that we have Toy Story 5, I, and that's the thing. I love this concept mm -hmm. because if you think about when Toy Story 1 came out, it was, ooh, I want to say 93 is when it came out. Right, Best I'm going to look it up. I was going to guess 98, but maybe I'm aging myself. If that even makes sense. You could be right. But go on, though. I don't want to interrupt um, you. We, Andy went off to college. He was probably like eight or nine when he first got his toys. Mm -hmm. Ten years later, we're in the mid-2000s, you know. Um, and this is starting to get to the point where technology is becoming more and more prevalent in kids' lives. Yep. So... I think this is the perfect time to introduce that concept if you're going from like just a chronological point of view. But I agree. I think different characters would have been better. Um, and that would have been just as impactful. But then if you have different characters, can you still call it Toy, toy Story? That is also very true. Uh, real quick, we're, we're actually both wrong. It was in the middle. It was in 95 was Toy Story 1. Ah, which damn. is, damn, I didn't beg that. But yeah, like I think for me, it's kind of like in theory right like when you look at this current and like i'll compare it to star wars because again because disney owns star wars like the star wars universe is so much more than just like luke and darth vader now where it's like some people's favorite characters because of generations is like the mandalorian who's the original character that came out five years ago or like other people let's say like ahsoka more than the like ray because they grew up with ahsoka like how i did right so i think that you could have easily done like a tscu a toy story cinematic universe and we've already got that because we had the buzz lightyear movie so you, you kind of know more lore and it just it's just kind of like hard to see because i myself will watch this movie because like i'm a toy story guy like i grew up with the movies i saw the third one like in theaters like i'm old enough or yeah i guess old enough to say i've seen one of them in theaters which it would be the third one but it's like a little kid today is not playing with toys unfortunately so again, the concept of the movie is great. Like, I like it. I just don't think we need it to be Buzz and Woody. We also are in kind of like a world where, like, I guess people used to make fun of it back in the day. I, I'm not those kind of guys, but you kind of see more like collectibles now be like the theme than just pure toys. You see like older people kind of collect figures and like display stuff versus like you going out and buying like the, the newest like Mattel doll. You're probably going to spend your money on like something better, like a hot toys figure. So I'm just intrigued to see what the demographic of this is going to be because obviously people are going to see it. It's going to be like high box office. Don't get me wrong. But like how many people is this going to hit? And I only say that because once again, like if it's me, like sure, I'd, I'd probably play with Buzz and Woody. But like if it's a, a little kid now that's a Gen Zer, what are they like? That's just not their era. So again, I'm really intrigued to see how this makes out because damn, if I'm a kid today, like I'm not playing with those toys either to be completely honest with you. That's just sign of the time. So I'm intrigued to see how good it'll be. I'm not praying for it to be bad. I just don't think we need it at all. So those are kind of my only thoughts on it. Evan, don't know if you have anything else to add, but um, you kind of just covered everything to be honest. Like I'll, I'll watch it and I'll see it. And do I have high hopes? Not really. <laughs> now I don't, I don't really want to hate on 
on anything else. But going to the next one here is something that Disney have. They just have to let it go because we have Frozen 3. Oh, my God. <laughs> what a segue. <laughs> we have Frozen 3, which, oh, man. So I'll give you a hot take. Now, like, I'm still a guy that thinks that Tangled is better than Frozen. But I think if Frozen was a one-off, it'd probably be, like, it, like objectively, it'd probably be their best one-off that they've ever done. But, like, I just don't think we need any more Frozen. And, again, it kind of goes back to, like, you know, my thoughts before. Like, Frozen 1 came out when I was in 6th grade. Like, I, I fully remember that. That was so long ago. <laughs> like, what? Like, I don't know if this gravitates towards the crowd. It will, because, obviously, they're just going to make money, like you motioned to me. But I think in terms of, like, what the movies stand for... It's just ruining the legacy. Like I don't, I don't care about Frozen Three, but like my little cousin that's gonna go watch it. Obviously, she's gonna care because it's all, uh, Anna and Elsa. But it's almost like, damn, are they that desperate that they're bringing back Toy Story and Frozen? I'm kind of okay with it being Frozen Two, but like to do a third one, I don't know. Like, what else are they gonna do? Are they gonna? I, yeah, I don't know. We know nothing about this besides the release date of it coming out in 2027 at some point. But we don't really know plot points. We don't know characters. We don't know new characters, returning characters. I don't really know. Evan, uh, are you like a, a fan of the Frozen franchise? I like Frozen. Mm -hmm. I like Frozen 1, Frozen 2. Any situation where we could get Idina Menzel singing excellent songs, yep. I'm here for. That's Rachel Berry's mom, actually, if she didn't actually? know. Actually? Genuinely, yeah. Wow. She played Rachel Berry's mom in Glee. <laughs> Damn, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's great. Is her name Shelly, I think? Yeah, something like that. Something but like continue, that. Continue, yeah. Either way, that's pretty great. I'll uh, I'll take Idina Menzel singing whatever. Um, and Kristen Bell is again would be coming back. Um, I'm pretty confident Frozen 3 is going to have both Anna and Elsa. Um, that's about all I know. Yep. <laughs> Where are they going to take it? I really don't know. It's weird because at the end of Frozen 2, we got this um, kind of happy ending because Anna becomes queen. Elsa becomes one of the spirits of sorts or like a spirit queen. So I don't really know if it's going to be like a catastrophe that they're going to be dealing with. And then if it is, are we just getting away from the original message, which was a sisterly or in family bonds? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, we know the music's going to be amazing mm -hmm. because Frozen 2 had amazing songs. Frozen 1 had amazing songs. I'm looking forward to that aspect. Story-wise, we'll see. I think for me, what I'll kind of pitch now is I think I was always a fan of the lore of the Frozen universe because like canonically i think we now know that their mother and father died at shipwreck because that's in the second yeah movie. in the second one that was confirmed that they did yeah. unfortunately die due to a shipwreck so point a point b being that they're canonically related to rapunzel like they're rapunzel's cousin we know that yep. we know that's to be true and then point three is that or i guess c is that tarzan is a distant relative of them as well oh yeah that's a huge theory um so, so yeah, the theory is that the shipwrecked couple that were uh, abandoned on that island in Tarzan is actually Anna and Elsa's parents. Yeah. And then they had a secret son or something on the voyage. Mm -hmm. And then they unfortunately, yeah, yes. that happened. So going back, though, to Secret Kid, I would love it if this movie, like, presented a secret child that they had that they didn't raise. That was, like, their eldest daughter. Because it goes, like, Elsa's the second daughter, right? Yep. So... What uh, if like technically Elsa's the first on as the second? Yeah, okay, okay. So in this in this page, uh they had an older daughter that maybe also got got powers that they didn't want to deal with, and then when they had the Elsa, they're like, Oh, you know what? We're stuck with this. We have to take care of it now. That would be kind of cool. Then we get to see what happens to the kingdom. It would have to go to the older sister, obviously, or the older brother, who knows. Still those same ways. That would be interesting. I think that would be kind of cool because I don't need to see them fight no like ice giant or like mystic spirit like i'd rather have some royal conflict as if it's like a game of thrones type beat where it's like oh shoot like you know not only did your parents like die oh, damn that sounded horrible to say not only did your parents die but they also had a secret kid and now that kid is back for like their throne they're like yeah man you know my my parents they didn't raise me 
I still love them, but I have disdain for you because they raised you. You know, like it, it's it it could be there. It, it could be cool. It's possible. If it's not that, and I'm not trying to sound like a narcissist, but if it's not that, then I don't know what it could be. <laughs> no, <laughs> you me know, either. like that's that's just the best way I'll put but it. But I think that would be really cool too if there was just like a power play for the throne of. Mm-hmm. Um, well, Arendelle? Say, yeah, I was going to say Arendelle? Alexandria, and I was like, no, that's Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, Arendelle. I think that would be really neat. Yeah, I, um, I would love to rewatch that movie. All right, hot take, though. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Maybe it's a hot take. I would rather get a Tangled 2 than a Frozen 3. So, I think on face value, that's not a hot take. But the reason why I will quote-unquote disagree is because I still die on the fact that Tangled is their best standalone. I don't want that I to agree. change, you know? Like, I love Tangled. I think Brave is a close second. No, I'll do that. I'd rather a Brave 2 than a Frozen 3. You know what? That's, okay. that's how you I'll You know what? It. I'll compromise. I'll see you there. Yeah, because I would love to see more of Brave and Merida. I don't I don't personally need to see more of Rapunzel. She had her happy ending. She made her cameo with Flynn Rider and Frozen. So they're good. They're chilling. But I'd like to see more of Brave. The same way I don't need to see more of Anna and Elsa, unfortunately. That's just... Fair. My, my, my rip off the band-aid take but moving on to something that now this is what i'm really excited for especially because of like i guess my age with it is we got uh this is a really good sequel got zootopia 2 has been announced i'm very excited for this because i just loved the first one it's not necessarily my childhood movie but it came out when i was much older than i was when i when i saw the aforementioned movies um yeah it came out in 2016 so i was 14 years old so this was like one of probably the first movie disney movie i saw as like a teenager if that makes sense so i got a lot of love for this movie i thought if you ever talk to me about like reselling and sales i got it from this movie where they buy those popsicles that are big they melt it down and scam but in all seriousness though this first movie was phenomenal i'm really excited for the second one we also do have a cast announcement as well as uh, we have Ki Hu Kwan, who's going to be playing uh, Gary. That's what the character's name is. I'm assuming that's a snake? Lizard? I, I, I guess so. He kind of looks like... We need Elden here for this. <laughs> we do. Yeah. Uh, Elden would be able to identify this. Yeah. But it kind of gives me um, ooh, Jungle Book vibes mm-hmm. to yeah, it. Yeah, I can see it. But um, yeah, I'm excited for this um, this uh, sequel. It comes out November 26, 2025. So a couple days b- uh, before my birthday too, which is kind of cool. I'm getting kind of blessed because that year, I think Fantastic Four comes out two weeks before my birthday. So November is going to be good for Disney. Like they're getting Fantastic Four that's coming out and Zootopia 2. But back to Zootopia 2 though. I, I'm really excited. I think out of all the ones that we've mentioned so far, this is the most fitting. As good as like Moana is and Incredibles is, I think Zootopia 2 was was like the next generation's Incredibles 2. Like we always wondered back in the day, are we going to get Incredibles 2? Is it going to happen? They're so loved. Da, 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 da. And I think Zootopia kind of fits that as well. And now we're getting it. And we have um, Kihu Kwan in it as well, which I think will be pretty cool. So uh, Evan, yeah, what are your first initial thoughts on this? Because I'm very excited. I'm super stoked. Mm-hmm. I'm here for it. And I think Gary, based off of the um, imaging used in Zootopia 2, specifically the two, Gary's going to play a very big role mm-hmm. in what happens in the movie. Um, so I'm always really excited for anything new i think zootopia is a very deserving um sequel um but i also kind of understand that like this is now our what one two three four fifth sequel that has been announced and we still have more to come Mm -hmm. so i'm also kind of like disney can we get something slightly original please yeah that's that's totally fair i just pulled up the cast from the first one again i love judy hops and nick wilde's kind of on-screen relationship if you will um i also forget that shakira played gazelle yeah which is just so random jk simmons was the mayor mayor linehart uh, also alan tudyk was duke i did not realize that don't know if you knew that but i i, didn't. I just assume alan tudyk's in every disney pixar works. legit so yeah it had a pretty good cast as well in the first one and i'm hoping there's uh some good good people coming back Id- idris alba which was chef bogo i don't think i knew that so there we go but yeah i think this movie is definitely fitting and deserving of a sequel i wish we knew more about it besides the release date but the fact that we have a release date a title card and a character card that's all, all we really need for now. Um, this trailer will drop, I don't know when, hopefully soon, because it comes out in about a year, just over a year. So we got to get a trailer soon. Um, yeah, I think this deserved a trailer to be shown, personally. I don't know why they didn't, but that's, again, that's okay. But yeah, I'm really excited for this one. I do think that out of the ones that we mentioned so far, like I said, it's the most fitting of a sequel, and I think this one will do big numbers. But now we're going to go on to 
two final Disney uh, Pixar projects here. And you ask and you shall receive as we have two original stuff, finally. As first one being Elio. Now this is to release theatrically on June 13th, 2025. So again, in about a year. It looks pretty cool. I've looked at some of the art. I like this, um, I guess, poster, if you will. Uh, yeah, don't know much about it other than this looks cool. So, Evan, what are your initial thoughts pretty on Pretty much, Elliot? I'm just happy for an original title. Um, I know that, well, um, this is the other thing. I think Disney's hurting for, for the money dollars, and I think that's why they're, uh, they're going back and just doing a bunch of sequels. But I think that Elio, or Elio, or whoever it's pronounced... Oh, it's um, probably Elio, actually. Probably. I, I apologize, um, people. But it makes me think of the Greek god Helios, so I don't know. Anyways. Um, <laughs> but... I think Elio, I, my, my theory just based off of this is it kind of looks like something alien or space related yep. uh, or time travel because that looks like a wormhole, <laughs> uh, but it's hard to say. Uh, I'm just happy for something new. It looks great. Um, I would like to see a little more though. So what I didn't know is this, and like this kind of shows how out of the loop I am with Pixar. So there was a teaser trailer that released over a year ago as it was supposed to be released on March 1st, 2024. But quote unquote got scooted out in the director's words to June 13th, 2025, meaning it just, um, yeah, essentially it's got delayed. But one thing that we do got to remember, and this was a result of the writer strike, it definitely got delayed because of that. But I'll read you the quick synopsis since we, again, this movie is not new, which I thought it was. Um, Elio is an underdog with an active imagination, finds himself inadvertently beamed up to the com the, the com universe, and in interplanetary organization with representatives from galaxies far and wide mistakenly identified as earth's ambassador uh, to the rest of the universe he starts to form new bonds with eccentric aliens while discovering who he's truly meant to be so yeah to your point there is aliens and he i guess they think he's earthly earth leader i you know what after hearing this i think i've seen there must be a trailer out for there is a teaser okay trailer, then yeah. i've probably seen the trailer yeah it came out over a year ago yeah. which again i i would not have saw unfortunately mm. but with that being said like that sounds cool sci-fi kind of movie and i think i think what's cool about disney in space and i think lightyear is a prime example is of how good the graphics are now and how cool it could look in the animation style i think this movie visually is going to be really cool like i can't tell you the the last time I saw a, no what I can the last time I saw a Disney Pixar film was Incredibles 2 uh, I don't think I've seen one since I feel like this one I would go see don't know about you but I just think that pitch alone that I low-key just gave myself I, I would see it so I'm I'm excited for it it's releasing June 13th 2025 like I mentioned so it looks like this project is one of the more established ones as it was just delayed that's why it hasn't come out yet so yeah I think that'll be good and I'm moving on to the final Disney Pixar animated that we have for us today is we have the first ever animated Pixar Disney Plus original series as we have Win or Lose. Uh, yeah, this this looks very wholesome. You said it best off air. This is kind of like Disney's play at Ted Lasso is what we're getting at. But Ted Lasso baseball. Yeah, legit. <laughs> I'm super stoked just because I'm a huge baseball guy. I'm a huge sports guy to begin with. And if it's going to be their first animated limited series like it's such a tongue twister but if it's their first disney plus series it has to be good and i know it'll be good one thing about disney pixar and we said this both yesterday when making this episode they don't really miss and i think that's why i kind of have confidence in whatever they do i'm gonna probably watch this weekly if it comes out weekly if it doesn't then i'll just binge it in one day or whatever you want to call it but i'm super excited as a baseball guy as well i think this is perfect because um for us baseball fans we know it ends in october so to kind of go with november with that kind of world series hangover that'll be nice and then boom we get disney baseball to start december i'm amped like i'm stoked so as the blue jays are horrible so i kind of need something to be happy about with baseball <laughs> and this will be it so i'm really excited for this you know and what? it comes out this year i have another comparison to make it's ted lasso meets backyard baseball <laughs> i don't know if you've ever played backyard baseball i haven't unfortunately with, it's a video game that has a bunch of kids just doing it's like the sandlot but there's a bunch of different characters playing backyard baseball uh <laughs> and it looks almost exactly like this so you know what i'm here for it i'm, I'm pretty <laughs> excited for it <laughs> yeah i think it'll be really good i'm excited to get to know these characters i definitely want to see the hardships i hope it's like good hardships so not like cobra kai where it's like you got baseball beef across the territories you I know like how the, how does that make sense like i, I hope, hope it's yeah, a lot sorry. of personal problems mm -hmm. you know uh, similar to like spider-man 
Yeah, like, that's a good. You comparison. know, I'm struggling to get this pitch down. You know, I don't know if I can do it. You know, I think that's a little more relatable than, yo, where you gotta beat the snakes, the snakes <laughs> team on the other side. You know, go team pickles. You know, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I think it'll be good, but I'm definitely looking forward to that. But yeah, so that's gonna do it for the Disney Pixar uh, part portion of the show or i guess the animated stuff is what i should say so now we're kind of going to shift gears to what we've what i've labeled as the best of the rest so this is more all live action actually it's all live action and um this is this could range from i guess national geographic got um, marvel some star wars in there so it'll be cool and uh first off this this movie is going to be very intriguing we knew it's coming out they've kind of had this is actually very established of a release so i'm happy to finally talk about it but we do have avatar 3 uh fire and ash and they're all oh, my days this poster is like the coolest thing that we've seen so far it's set to release next year on december 19th 2025 another james cameron masterpiece is in the works if you ask me now i haven't seen the second one and i know that's kind of a travesty it's kind of uh it's, <laughs> it's kind of ironic that i'm bigging up the third one if i haven't seen the second one but like i said red's my favorite color we were dealing with fire so i think this movie's gonna be so cool i can't wait to see the trailer i can't wait to see the movie itself and I do think this is going to be another James Cameron masterpiece. So, Evan, coming back to you, I think you've actually seen the second one, I think. Nope. Nope. Okay, so at least we're in the same boat. But I think for what this this franchise is, is that because it's James Cameron as well, it's to a different standard. You're not really going to release an Avatar movie that's not good. They begged for the sequel for how many years? I feel like it was over a decade and to get Avatar, Fire, and Ash, we kind of know there's going to be red aliens in it. I shouldn't call them aliens. I forget what they're actually called. The Navi. The Navi, yes. I don't know if the water-based Navi are called something different. Um, because I haven't seen the second one. But I've seen the first one, like, a bunch. Yeah. And it was great. I'm really looking forward to seeing more James Cameron knock this out. This is James Cameron's baby. Yeah, so literally. the fact that he's like putting so much time and effort into expanding the world and making it a little more enjoyable and making it more expansive is really, really good. He is also set to make a fourth movie. Yeah. I think every in the next two years. Hard to say. Um, I know that there is an Avatar 4 in the line. I don't know if there's an Avatar 5 all along the way. I will fact check you on that. Yeah, because I, I know you're right about because yeah, to Evan's point, they did announce when number two was announced. They also announced three and four. Avatar five, yeah, it's set to release in 2031. Go. So yeah, it's gonna be a uh, what sequel? I don't know. We'll call it that. Yeah, uh, like that. for lack of a better word. But yeah, it's gonna be pretty good. I'm looking forward to it. I'm here to see more Jake Sully. Yes. So it's gonna be great. Yep. And that this so this will be the third movie out of five because the fifth one will be the last one. Now, like I said, I I didn't see the second one. It was also like life is busy, right? You never know what's going on. But I feel like this one coming out will be really cool to see. And I just think that like seeing Red and Avi is gonna be pretty nice excuse me sorry but yeah no i've always been a red guy over blue even though i have blue on my shirt but i feel like when you for me when you have a universe that's all these blue characters to get like a, those same characters but in different colors i think it's been really cool maybe they won't even do red navi maybe it'll be different um creatures all around species it's very i guess possible. that's what we call it but i'm really excited though i think it'll be nice Besides the release date, we don't really know much. And I wish we saw one of us have seen the second one because we kind of can make theories. Just goes to show we need Elden here. Yep, literally. But moving on to the next one, which is very intriguing. Now, it's not something that us as Marvel fans necessarily want or need, but it's not something that I think is going to be bad. And I think this is due to the echo effect. But we do have an official movie for Ironheart that's coming out september 3rd 2025 i'm just gonna make sure that this is a movie because i wrote it down as a movie but you never know well <laughs> while you're looking for that um no I'm... i lied to your face it is a mini series <sighs> i i completely messed that part up in the script i apologize it is a series that immediately downgrades this for oh, me okay like straight up i think iron heart's a cool character but i get discount tony stark vibes um and iron heart was okay K in Black Panther 2 so I, I the big thing is I want to see what direction they take mm -hmm. and I want to see where Ironheart fits into the rest of the MCU and who knows it could be amazing we don't really know anything else about it but yeah I'm uh, the fact that it's all it's already been in made into a miniseries instead of like a movie 
I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. What, you, what are your thoughts, Justin? Yeah, so I'm... Oh, man, I'm kind of intrigued. So I like the character of Ironheart, but... And I like Riri... Riri Williams. God, that is so hard to I say. Know. What a tongue twister. Say that five times fast. Riri Williams. Yeah, no, I'm not doing it. Anyways, um, I do like the idea of Riri, but I do have a comic, and I wish I brought it in. I kind of blank because it's packed away, but I have her first appearance, and it's Tony Stark and Riri Williams, and it's like Tony Stark's alive. I think I would have liked this a bit more if we got Riri in the MCU in, let's just say, Spider-Man Homecoming, because that's when we see Mr. Stark and, and Peter, and obviously Peter is labeled as like a Stark intern. We know he's not, but like maybe he could have been and then maybe in that program he meets riri williams because again that that would make sense and like as much as she is b-tech iron man it would make sense though because it's like you got one girl that's like very technologically good versus spider-man who's like has powers so this wouldn't really be weird and i think the biggest marvel's biggest failure or biggest i guess hardship is themselves and i say this because for like a diehard fan like me or evan that like knows characters yeah we know that iron heart is not just b-tech iron man but if you see like if you're a casual and you don't know these things you're not gonna take this seriously you're gonna be like oh man so they just ran out of ideas and created a female african iron man well well no like this character's been around for so many years it just again like the casuals wouldn't really know that so I think you could have set it up like how you set up Echo. We didn't really want Echo. I think I said multiple times, this, like, I couldn't care for this. It was a great show. Like, it was good. It had moments, had cool action, and we know Echo because of X, Y, and Z. The same way we could have known Riri Williams a bit better than we know her from Black Panther. But, like, it is what it is. I think Marvel, I'm not saying they can't do wrong right now, but we've got a lot of good announcements, good projects coming out. And next year as well, we do got to remember that we are getting Fantastic Four a little bit after this. So I feel like this is going to kind of end and then you're going to see Fantastic Four in theater. It's not going to lead into it, but, you know, it's something, right? Like, I don't want to hate on it before we've seen any trailers before it comes out, but it is something. Now, shifting to another Marvel series that I didn't necessarily want that's coming out sooner is uh, it was Agatha all along as... We got, oh my God, I forget her name, but the actor for Agatha, do you remember her name? No, I forget I'm, it. I'm gonna look it up. That just goes to show how long ago WandaVision was. Yep. Great actress, but she performed a musical at, um, I was going to call it SDC, but no, this was D23. So this is, yeah, Catherine Hahn. So Catherine Hahn made, made an appearance. Sorry, I love Catherine Hahn. She's great. And they performed a musical number ahead of Agatha all along. Now, I'm very excited for this. I would have been 10 times more excited about two years ago because we should have got this right after WandaVision. Granted, it was announced that it was going to release one or two years after WandaVision. They took the ladder and taking the ladder saw this got delayed because of the writer strike. So that's kind of unfair to judge. But the trailers look awesome. They released a new trailer. And one person that I do want to bring up is, <laughs> well, I don't know if it is, but... We might have saw the one and only Mephisto in the trailer. We do have a photo. Do we think this is Mephisto? I don't know. Some people online are saying it. I just wanted to bring it up and talk about it. Mm, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think so. The head is what's giving it because Mephisto looks a lot like that. You betcha. It's I really just don't know. I don't know. Is he sitting on something there? Like if, if it is Mephisto, like are those legs on a throne? Like maybe? It's hard to tell. It you know what? Tell, I'll, yeah. I'd have to look back at the trailer and then mm -hmm. go from there. It's really hard to say. If this is Mephisto, they've done Mephisto dirty. Yeah, I kind of hope it's not. Because from what I can see, this looks like a statue that is dedicated to Mephisto. But it's really hard to say what it is. It's hard to see where like fingers begin and wing. Where fingers end and wing begins. So tough to say especially considering fans have been asking for mephisto for years yeah, since been, like iron man one it's been like the drawback theory in every marvel project probably since iron man one like you said i feel like in one way shape or form someone has said online yeah ahead of this marvel movie like we could expect mephisto <laughs> but with that being said i do think this will be really good to see um it leads into halloween which is also nice and i think that as much as I wanted to hate on this, I don't think I can just because of how good it looks. Granted, it, we deserved it a bit longer ago. But yeah, I didn't get a, a photo, but I'll show you all Mephisto quickly. Like, I think that when once this guy comes into the MCU, it's going to be wild. Now, 
it's it'll be interesting to see because it makes sense for mephisto to pull up now one thing about wanda's character is that like in the comics it's very driven from mephisto like mephisto plays a big part in her altering reality mephisto plays a big part in and him taking away that reality being her children and we're dealing with like the supernatural like the witches and the magic like how do you not have mephisto that guy like is the marvel devil essentially like i i i don't really like him obviously but he's a cool character for what he represents and yeah i don't know if it, if you will if that is mephisto specifically maybe we'll get him in the show who knows but i just hope it's not like a darth plagius acolyte situation That's i think if we don't get him in the show then there's going to be a lot of reference to him yeah i'm with you on that i i could live with that honestly but yep so that that kind of is a good segue because i did bring up star wars which we'll get into some more star wars content here um yeah we got another i guess discussion and look at man the mandalorian and grogu which is set to release in theaters on may 22nd 2026 um yeah this is shot from the trailer and i think this is a great shot personally um yeah honestly i'm not gonna do a good job at bigging this up because i just love the mandalorian and i think it's gonna be great but i don't know and i only say i don't know because i just want to see who's in it i don't think we have a lot of star wars projects before this because actually i lied to you we do have a couple um uh, one of them being skeleton crew which we're not going to discuss today but skeleton crew crew is coming out we also have the next one after this which we will discuss but in terms of mando and grogu now we know zeb is going to be in it as he was shown in the trailer um i wasn't a huge fan of the recent season i can't lie really i didn't think okay no i should rephrase this i think i liked it for certain aspects such as bo katan and i really enjoyed like that kind of dilemma but for what mando and grogu are i could kind of see why they're making a movie now and they're not doing a fifth season and it's just a matter of build up so like is boba fett gonna be in this is ahsoka gonna be in this we know zeb's gonna be in it does ezra bridger make an appearance because remember this is like the disney verse culminating movie right so i want to i want to know how much of this is actually gonna be mando and grogu and how much of this is gonna be disney verse regardless of of what it is i'm excited like i think it'll be good we're getting a star wars theatrical release and we're getting two of my favorite characters like i said before like you know if you're growing up with star wars in this kind of era the mandalorian is probably your favorite character not my favorite of all time obviously because i'm a bit older but i do love the character and i do think that pedro pascal is kind of he can't really do any wrong he's like we said last week he's like hollywood's dad <laughs> you know he's he's mando he's mr fantastic he's joel this guy's doing everything right now and i feel like for pedro himself i'm not saying that this is kind of just like another day at the office but because he's doing so much like i kind of forgot <laughs> about this because we've been talking fantastic four but i do think it'll be good um in terms of like quality of movie we could be talking about like a top five star wars film and i say this right if you just bear with me i do hope it's better than the sequel so that checks off three of them uh anything will be better than solo so that's another one i'm not a huge rogue one guy i apparently that's a hot take it's a bad take but again that's five movies right there that i think it will be better than so it's just a matter of will it be better than one of your favorite original sixes and like i'm not a nostalgia merchant so i'll fully tell you if it is better than one of mine but i do think this will be really good i'm excited to see more of it to hear more about it and to kind of get more information as a whole i'm super pumped i'm super stoked it's gonna be good um there's so much to this i think that we're gonna get all the rebels yes that would be awesome i think we're gonna get all of them in here and i think that would be super awesome we definitely need hera like Agreed. for sure big agree i think that it would be really good and if we get hera we get ezra by mm -hmm. default yeah um will we get ahsoka that's that's a big yeah. question well then to even relay on that too if we get ahsoka then how, does that mean they're back because remember how they get stuck yep so that's kind of what i was thinking they got they may need to find a solution to be unstuck from where they are mm -hmm. so hard to and then say. in this movie is thrawn gonna be in it man they thrawn kind of has, has to be, to be the yeah. big bad but like oh man we're gonna see mando and like we have to see ezra that's the thing right you can't really have like because you're right i think we're gonna get the rebels and if you get the rebels you need to have the rebels so you need to have ezra in there as well we have zeb and I think if Thrawn's going to be there, you need Ezra Bridger. I think now, so. Now, like, this is the, why I'm kind of like, damn, like, Bando's the coolest guy they've ever made. Like, that's how they market him, at least. But is he really going to be in his first ever movie? And I'm going to care about all the other characters but him? Probably. <laughs> you know, we but, like, the names that you just mentioned, right? And this is, like, kind of shows, not, like, the age, but 
for me, when you say like the the likes of Ezra Bridger, you say Ahsoka Tano, Harris Andula, even a potential Kane and Jarrus flashback, like you have a lot of characters that kind of built this foundation that I'm like, yes, give them their live action, give them their theatrical release. And then it's like, oh yeah, damn, this is a Mando movie, <laughs> you know, this Mando and Grogu movie, which I think is good. It's good to kind of suffer from that. You don't want to have horrible side characters. You'd rather have an abundance of great characters, which I think this movie is going to have. So I'm, I'm just really intrigued to see the first looks for sure. I'm super excited. And by default, we should get Bo, uh, more Bo-Katan. Yes, I love Bo-Katan. So I'm, I'm here for it. And hopefully get Boba Fett. Like, get Boba Fett one of his comic suits in the movie like that give me a black Boba cool. Fett suit if man you know, you know. imagine this is just the avengers of star wars That's what i hope it is like i hope it's that and i think they deserve it and like i think one thing about disney star wars is that like i'll die on the hill it gets too much hate a lot of people look at like let's say the acolyte and solo and episode eight and think that's what disney star wars is it's not disney star wars has done a lot of good such as ahsoka kenobi and all of mando to me the book of boba fett you could do one better and say rogue one as well i i won't but a lot of people will um episode seven was a phenomenon it made over a billion dollars so it's like i'm not gonna let two slip-ups kind of define it all star wars visions is not canon but some of the best star wars that you've seen i watched an episode with eldon uh, a couple weeks ago and i loved it you even could go on further and talk about the bad batch which i haven't seen but has a lot of good fans so i just don't really think that disney star wars does as bad as people think i think they have slip-ups but look at marvel you know look at dc look at any like movie company no one really goes perfect and it's just bound to happen but i do think that this is going to be a step in the right direction and the series that i didn't mention andor because andor is also getting a season two which we'll jump into now as well now as someone who hates rogue one i love andor season one i thought andor season one was like amazing i i just i was blown away it had 12 episodes if i'm not mistaken as well so that's more than your usual and a season two was announced unfortunately it has been delayed to 2025 which we didn't know from a bit ago because of that writer strike but yep 2025 and or season two will be released and we kind of know how this is gonna go and what this is gonna lead up to i think that's the biggest issue with any like pre-sequel that they do is that there'll be suspense there'll be build up but you know what's gonna happen and we know what happens in rogue one so this is kind of like okay cool how can we build up to rogue one which again is is okay but yeah evan what are your first thoughts though on getting and or back we we didn't know it was coming but what are your thoughts i'm super stoked for it it's gonna be good um i agree with you and i think that's also one of the reasons why rogue one gets a little bit of flack is we know how rogue one ends mm -hmm. and how it should end and the fact that when they were developing the movie they almost considered not following through with that um and then someone said no you have to because yeah, like <laughs> it doesn't make sense if you don't uh so yeah i'm excited for it um i enjoyed andor andor was really enjoyable um i mostly had fun with dan our station manager goofing off about it but yeah it's it's gonna be great yeah we are gonna get orson krennic back in rogue one or sorry in andor season two which i think is good and i think for me right like i don't want to be a hater like at all it just rogue one's not my cup of tea like I'm not going to sit down and ro and watch Rogue One. I'm not going to say, oh my god, I love Star Wars. Let me watch Rogue One. But to be honest, like if you were to put on a Disneyverse show, I'm going to call it the Disneyverse, um, yeah, Andor would probably be your ideal choice. Now, do I think it's better than like Mando, Kenobi, Ahsoka? I personally don't. But because it's not that, it's different. And I think maybe that's what like my immature mind was thinking about Rogue One. I was comparing it to episode three, episode five, episode six. And they're just it's just not the same. And like I I could accept that. I think when you look at a movie like Solo, that's that formula gone wrong. But but Rogue One is that formula gone right, if that makes sense. So I am excited for this. I do think it'll be really good. Uh Cassian Andor is one of my favorite characters from the new Disney verse. It just again, it sucks. We know how it ends. And I think that's the killer. Like if you gave us Rogue One or sorry, Andor season one and season two, and then announced, oh by the way, 2024, they're getting Rogue One a Star Wars story, which is like the ending of that done you're sold but i think because they didn't do it like that is why i kind of like andor more and i don't like rogue one as much because i think andor does it better but who knows maybe i gotta rewatch it but yeah that's just my cup of tea on andor season two like i said we kind of know what's gonna happen you don't really gotta theorize like if you, if you don't then 
I don't really understand how you got to this point. You know it's going to lead up to the movie. So, yeah, I'm excited for it. I think it'll be good. Uh, any last thoughts on Andor before we move on, Evan? No, I'm just super stoked to talk about the next thing we're talking about. It's probably my most anticipated thing. Yes. So, going back to Marvel, we're going we're going to darken up the tone a little bit. Now, one of my favorite Marvel characters ever, despite me not seeing his predecessing show, is getting a reboot. In fact, he's getting born again. <laughs> As we have Daredevil Born Again officially getting spoken about because we didn't know what this show was going to be. It's in limbo, but now it's back and it will be released on March or sorry, in March of 2025. So it's coming up. I'm really excited. I love Daredevil. I haven't seen the show. I know. I like I know that's horrible, but I, I love his comics. OK, I'm a huge Daredevil guy. He has a red suit and i absolutely love him i think charlie cox is like the perfect matt murdoch perfect daredevil we saw him in she hulk donning the classic yellow suit i thought that was amazing and he's just one of my favorite marvel characters as a whole and yeah this is gonna be amazing now evan i know you've actually seen og daredevil if we'll call it that um as someone that is actually up to date <laughs> what are your thoughts because i know I you're hyped i am here for it i am so excited it's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. I love the Netflix Daredevil. Yep. Uh, it was dark. It was violent. It was gory. Um, and I think that that's exactly the feel that worked for um, Charlie Cox's Daredevil. Mm -hmm. um, we're also getting the re complete returning cast. Yes. Which means we're going to get Foggy, which means we're going to get Deborah Ann Wool again, and we're going to get... Um, John Bernthal. John Bernthal, yep. which is great because John Bernthal's Punisher. <laughs> yep. so, Hopefully Rosario Dawson's back too. I know yeah. she's in the original one. We'll yeah, yeah, see. Yeah. So I'm I'm here for it. I'm so excited. I think Charlie I completely agree. Charlie Cox is the perfect daredevil and he does it so well. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. My only concerns are will disney have their claws a little too deep in this and they're gonna make it a little bit more viewer friendly so yeah that was everyone's concern mine included and then i haven't even seen the original one but now i wish i brought it up but i saw this this morning now vincent d'onofrio actually commented on this i'm gonna see if i can pull it up quickly but he said that this show is actually just as dark if not even darker yes um he said that um it was a quote of they made him do a scene that he was surprised made it into it he said i'm trying to find it but okay okay yeah so the direct quote is so the article reads daredevil born again star vincent d'onofrio says series goes quote m goes much further with violence than netflix show so that being said that's that's also like one thing that i'm really excited about and the exact quote that i mentioned is there's one thing in particular that my character does that i can't believe made it into the cut so that's promising let's go and like we kind of saw how violent they could be in echo just because again echo is like the you got a benchmark with echo unfortunately because it's disney and it's like mcu versus netflix that's a nice kit by the way manchester united but <laughs> anywho um i do think that with that being said is there a name on the back uh nope nope okay sorry bud <laughs> damn um anywho though yeah so just going back to uh to daredevil i do think that with how dark echo was in the scenes i do think that that's a good sign for this this is his reported suit in in born again i think this is the same suit that they use in echo right? i think it was yeah so i'm here Which for I'm it okay with yeah i love so, it so i also want to say that echo was a good benchmark i think the success of um maybe this is a stretch but i think the success of wolverine and deadpool may have also been a contributing factor to um whether they can make this r-rated or not maybe not necessarily because of the swearing but more for the gore and violence yeah that's yeah honestly i never thought about that to be honest that's a great point and i think that like just to kind of relay on that you get a franchise such as daredevil or deadpool sorry that is so dark and so like out there but it made so much money and i'm not saying that i think the difference between daredevil and deadpool is that you kind of watch daredevil for daredevil whereas you watch deadpool for ryan reynolds and i'll say that because as cool as like deadpool is i just don't think he was ever on that category like i don't know if that's a hot take but i don't think he was but ryan reynolds really elevates that character 20 years today i think 
Charlie Cox, Ben Affleck, comics, Lego, uh, animation, cameos, whatever it is with Daredevil specifically gets you off the seat. So I do think that's a good point. One thing that got me off my seat during this trailer, though, is that we got a look at some new suits potentially. Now, this is so cool because in the middle, we got the Shadowland suit. Got, well, it has to be, at least. Like, it, There's no way they're not doing the Shadowland suit, especially because it has red eyes. So we're going to see a black Daredevil suit. Oh my god, I can't wait. Like, this has been my dream for this series, I think, for the past, like, two years now. And I am, I'm stoked. Now, Evan, I don't know how familiar you are with Shadowland, but are you, do you have, like, any, I guess, like, are you hyped for these new suits, though? I am hyped for Daredevil and any suit that comes with it, so long as it's not yellow. <laughs> I didn't like the yellow suit. I thought it was dumb, um, mostly because it seemed like it was the helmet and only certain parts of the suit were i don't know to me i was like deadpool is red he's got red on him so it should be red but i am hyped for this black suit and this white suit mm -hmm. that's pretty exciting you know quite a bit more about the black suit the shadowland suit than i do mm -hmm. so you go ahead yeah um real quick before we go off unfortunately the whole photo of that i couldn't get and then we saw it after the yellow suit was also in Come this on. so there's five total suits i was only able to grab this i just couldn't find it online and then on instagram i saw it and i'm like oh, okay well i ain't doing all that because it's a bit too much to to bring in because it was like watermarked and whatnot but yeah so the shadowland suit specifically comes from the shadowland comic where daredevil kind of goes rogue and is a villain and pretty much from there um, they don't know that he's a bad guy. And at this point, Daredevil is running Hell's Kitchen and pretty much the Avengers like, yeah, that's Matt Murdock. Like, that's our, that's our boy, but he's moving weird. Let's go investigate. So Iron Man is like, oh, cool, man. Like if you want to go investigate him, be my guest. Like we know nothing's going to happen. So Bullseye, why don't you go? He's like, oh yeah, sure, man. Like that's my, that's my guy. Yeah. Daredevil like kills Bullseye <laughs> to start that story. Like it's wild what yeah it's nuts like they go they talk and he's like like dude like w what do you mean he's like well well matt like you can't move like that he's like okay then stop me and he's like well what do you mean and they just fight and he kills him that's the first like book of shadowland so it's a definitely a darker version of the character i have a, a shadowland funko pop which is insane and i really wish i had it signed i was gonna see charlie cox at vancouver fan expo and get him to sign it and then he canceled because he was shooting daredevil born again like look at the irony i wanted him to sign that pop before this got announced and that would have been such a grail and then no unfortunately it couldn't be but this is a cool panel though just to like, really show off the suit you can see it's black with the red oh, logo yeah. that and looks those awesome. are kind of like his ninja friends that he's that he's rolling with but yeah i'm really excited though for that just because like like i said i haven't seen the show and this kind of goes back to my point about deadpool and daredevil like i have not seen the show at all but daredevil is one of my favorite characters from all of his other lore so i don't know i'm not saying i don't need to see the show obviously i'll try and watch it but with that being said like this is one of my favorite characters so i'm hyped and uh yeah so that's kind of all we have for daredevil we're gonna move on now to another red character actually but we're gonna have the final product to discuss today as we have captain america brave new world which we did already discuss but they did get another look at um at uh, d23 i was gonna call it san diego again but it wasn't but d23 saw another look at captain america brave new world which is coming out on february 14 2025 now the the look in question though was we got another look at red hulk now last time it was teased this time we kind of have a full body look as harrison ford uh he's going into red hulk obviously he's playing thunderbolt ross and yeah it was it was cool to see the transformation i'm very very intrigued to see what happens now we've, we've got some more information about the movie that we didn't necessarily have when we discussed it before um essentially in this film they've acknowledged that tiamat the uh celestial that is outside of the earth like that is being harvested for animantium so we're getting animantium in the mcu through tiamat which which makes sense like i'll, I'll take it and pretty much ross is like 
okay, cool, Falcon, you're my guy, go harvest this for me. And he says yes. So those scenes in the trailer that you see him, that you see Falcon flying by Tiamat is actually him harvesting it as well. And other leaders have gotten it. And now Thunderbolt Ross is the president of the United States. Well, he's running for it at least. And now he's kind of in the hot seat. And so because he's in the hot seat, he kind of wants to make a team and he wants Sam to kind of form that team. And with that being said, from there, someone poisons Ross to become the Red Hulk. That's what we've gathered. That's what I think is happening from what I've read online. We don't know officially yet because that trailer has not been announced to the public, which is at D23. But I think this has grounds for an amazing movie. We kind of said that last week, and now we'll kind of come back to it. So, Evan, with the new information, how much more excited are you for this film? The more we talk about it and the more we revisit this, the more excited I am for it, mm -hmm. um, especially with a bunch of new characters. I like the idea of Harrison Ford coming back back to yep. the disney fold and that's really exciting um i don't know a lot about the eternals um mm -hmm. so the fact that we're getting adamantium introduced into the world of the mcu very exciting um if, if anything it almost justifies the introduction of other adamantium based characters which is also really good um if that's the case and adamantium is the big focal point of this movie um I think that means that Falcon may get some new wings. Oh, yeah. That's a good... I didn't even think about that. Which would be super exciting. That would be pretty cool. Or he might get a new shield because mm -hmm. something happens to his current one. Yeah. That, that would be pretty sick. I, I would be I. pretty excited yeah. for that. I think it's cool, too, because, like... And now I said this to a friend recently. I think this phase of Marvel... A lot of people ha haven't really liked it because they're not diehard fans. And I'm not saying that to, you know, judge... But, like, this movie is an indirect sequel to The Eternals, which not everyone was going, going to go see. I don't think, Evan, you haven't even seen it yourself. No, I haven't. I'm just a huge Celestial guy, so I went and saw it, obviously. But, like, you have to see, like, a B-tier movie to appreciate an A-tier movie and a C-tier to appreciate a B-tier. And I understand. And that's why I was very lenient with Marvel. And, like, I was one of the only ones because I'm like, you need time to build up this universe. And granted, we finally have answers. We're like, why has Tiamat never been acknowledged? You know, no pun intended to Roman Reigns, but like, how does no one acknowledge him? He's a celestial that's on the top of the earth. Like, does anyone understand how crazy that is? So I love that we're finally getting a chance to acknowledge him. And from there, we're going to see what happens in this movie. But yeah, I'm very excited for this. This is the uh, Captain America Brave New World, which comes out February 14th, 2025. A lot to talk about once that film finally comes out. And I can't wait. But that being said, guys, I think that's going to do it for us. Evan, any final thoughts? No, I'm um, just fantastic. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm so excited for the rest of what Disney comes out for. Mm -hmm. I've been a big Disney fan for a while, so I enjoyed this show talking about D23. Yeah, it was definitely good. I thought D23 was a, a success. Sorry. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Uh, thank you, Evan, for, uh, for behind the scenes as always. Should cannot do the show without you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed our takes on uh, D23. I enjoyed making this episode for sure. We prepped it a couple days ago. It was nice to look at all the announcements just to put a smile on my face looking at some of my childhood movies coming back to life and what we got in store for Disney and Marvel and even Star Wars. So, that being said, that's it from us today. Please don't forget to follow us on social media at DCSA Media Hub. Thank you guys so much. And that was screen chat live from the Media Hub on riotradio.ca.